الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصُوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصُوا بِالصَّبْرِ In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most compassionate, the most merciful, all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He who is guided by the will of Allah, no one can misguide him. And he who is misguided, no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, uh, session number 46, alhamdulillah. True? Alhamdulillah. On the right track. Alhamdulillah. Ah. So, jazakumullah khair. Uh, today, our first point that we will be discussing, inshallah, it will be woman azlam. We reached verse number 114. 114. Woman azlam mimman mana'a masajid Allah ay yudhkara fi hasmuhu wasa'a fi kharabiha ulaika ma kana lahum ay yadkhuluha illa khaifin lahum fi dunya khizyu wa lahum fi al-akhirati adhabun azim. However, my way always, I try just to connect, just to keep you on the track, what we were doing, what we are doing, what we will be doing, because at the end, it's all connected, <laughs> okay? Last time, we highlighted many points. On top of them, the concept of that Jews, Christians, Muslims, and non-believers, every one of them is claiming that he is on the right track. وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ وَقَالَتِ النَّصَارَةِ And we believe as well. We highlighted the concept, everyone believes that the paradise is his. No problem. At least you as a Muslim, be aware of your faith. <laughs> and by the way, please don't put some people, just very quickly, because we have a lot of youth, mashallah, listening. Generally speaking, because we are in the age of TikTok. You know age of TikTok? Fast food. Intellectual fast food. Everything quick, you know? For mainly speaking, speaking, people, they have no time to study, no time to set for ilm. So an idea from here, an, a concept from here, a video with a few seconds sometimes could destroy, okay? How do you know that you are on the right? Who told you that your religion is right? You will start thinking in a simple way, yes, how do I know? What if my religion is wrong? Oh, wait, 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 be careful, by the way. Freeze the whole idea of religion and go to the materialistic political world with a part of the religion Americans do they believe that they are the best democratic state or not? Yes. Type French do they believe that Americans are better than them? No. Type British people in Britain do they believe that French are better than them? Type Japanese people do they believe that French British Americans are better than them? The boy, they are not shaking all the time. Everyone is about to leave his culture to other culture. Why? Why is just you when you hear something? Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Normal thing, by the way, I'm not against you even leaving Islam. But before you take a decision that what if what I'm in is wrong, study it very well. Be sure that it's wrong. Because you can't imagine, even with non-religious people, a Japanese person who was lived in a Japanese culture, I'm not discussing religion now, just because once he saw a TikTok video telling him, how do you know you, Mr. Japanese, that, for example, uh, the Japanese culture is not less or better than French people. Immediately he decides to become French. I'm asking. Does it happen in reality? Just TikTok video. You are French, you decide to become Japanese? No, this does not happen. Wait, no problem, by the way, to change. No problem. But respect yourself. Respect your mind. Be aware of what culture you have, what religion you have, whatever you have. Be sure that it deserves to be forsaken or to, uh, leave left. Then take your decision. Allah ma'ak. What can I do for you? <laughs> really? But so be careful. So the fact that we have different tracks or groups of people, everyone believes that he is holding the truth or the right thing does not mean that I mean, you, will, you have to be all the time in doubt. No. In our point of view, we have the haq, regardless what others think, period. If you want to doubt this, do it. By the way, 
By the way, no religion on earth is asking his followers and challenging their minds. Uli al-albab, yatafakkaroon, ya'aqiloon. All the time. Read the Quran. Ya'aqiloon, yatafakkaroon. Uli al-albab, liqawmi ya'aqiloon. Liqawmi yatafakkaroon. All the time, which means reflect upon, think about it. If you can't prove it, if you don't have it, leave it. Leave it, no problem. But after what we call iqamat al-hujjah against yourself. Establish the argument against yourself. Look, wallahi, you Muslims, Quran, Allah was not able to prove to me that Islam is the best. After giving the good time to study Islam. Okay? This, this be clear. This is one of the most important points we highlighted last time. Okay? Today. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started talking about woman azlamu mimman man'a masajid Allahi ay yudhkara fi hasmuhu wasa'a fi kharabiha ulaika ma kana lahum ay yadkhuluha illa khaifin lahum fi dunya khizyun wa lahum fi al-akhirati adhabun azim who does more it's 114 now if you want to, to, to follow or to read with us from your mobile from your Quran 114 chapter al-Baqarah chapter 2 who does more wrong than those who prevent Allah's name from being mentioned in his places of worship? When Allah said, وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ مَنَعَ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يُذْكَرَ فِيهَا اسْمُهُ Who is doing more bad, more sin. It's an Arabic style as if, as if this style means no one is doing bad more than those. <laughs> ومن أظلمه قال سؤال استفهامي استنكاري which means this style of questioning it's an Arabic style to tell you no one is worse than those people ومن أظلمه ممن منع who does more wrong than those who prevent Allah's name from being mentioned the concept of Allah's name being mentioned does not mean just the sound, which means we can write the name of Allah, we can just play the record, Allah, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, and that's it. No, 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 no. This word represents, represents the respect of Allah's word, the respect of Allah's will, <laughs> through His commandments, which means who is number one? Whose word is applied, number one. Allah. You see, Allah. And by the way, this is the concept, uh, the core concept of Tawheed, <laughs> monotheism. Okay? Habibi, brother, please, can you please just, I, I told you, I'm, I'm losing <laughs> my mind when someone is talking to the other. Please, Jazakallah khair. I expected this and I asked you in advance. Jazakallah khair, please. <clears throat> So who does more wrong than those who prevent Allah's name from being mentioned in his place of worship and strive, look, strive to destroy them, the houses of Allah. Such people have no right to enter these places except with fear. So Allah is giving us like a principle, qaida, sunnah kawniya. The one who puts any efforts to prevent Allah's name to be mentioned, to be number one, this one will face a destiny. This destiny, in brief, is They will not come into these places except with fear. They are the enemy of Allah now. Because, <laughs> you know, we can witness this in our daily life, especially in the Arab world. <laughs> After the collapse of the Ottomans, we see how many tough, non-religious, secular Arab countries, they started fighting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the amazing thing, so oh, for them is this grace in this world and they will suffer a tremendous punishment in the hereafter. To be honest with you, I was shocked when I was preparing this ayah. You know, this ayah, we all know it. We read it in the Quran, we hear it. And every time I hear this ayah, woman, adlam, man, immediately what comes to my mind, what used to happen in Arab world, in Syria, in Egypt, in Iraq, Marxism, Arab nationalism. This is what comes to my mind, oh, because this is what we witnessed. And we know we have a lot of very tough, you know, anti-religious movement like Marxism and the extremist of Arab nationalism against Islam. We have it in Iraq, in Syria, in Egypt, for, you know. So we, 
This is the only thing, and we can witness some of them, even when they come to do the Umrah, or the, this is the house of Allah, you see 5,000 soldiers protecting them. When the one of those people wants to do the Umrah in the house of Allah, they are surrounded with five to 7,000, and they stop the tawaf completely for everyone. You are afraid from home. Mean sa'il fi kasla. Are you with me? Oh, yeah, that, this, is, this is the application. Always when I used to read this ayah, the only thing used to come to my mind, someone like Abdul Nasser, who used to be in Egypt, okay? Or uh, those people of Syria and Egypt 60, 70 years ago, or the tough secular people, when I prepared from about seven tafsir, I was shocked. Because, you know, I read tafsir 600 years ago, 500 years ago, 800 years ago. I was shocked about the, how wide the mufassirun, the interpreters, who were talking the examples that they brought in the tafsir, because the meaning is general, which at any time, no one is doing more wrong than those who prevent the name of Allah. Those will be punished and etc. General, applicable in our time. When I went to the mufassirin, I found them talking about Jews, Christians, and Romans, and the Assyrians, and the Babylonians. Can you imagine this? So because of, it's part of my field, so I went and researched very well, look and see what the ayah was covering indirectly. Go back in the, at least in the history that we can recognize. More than 3,000 years ago from now, we used to have the Assyrians, al Ashuriyin. They attacked the believers of their time, which is what was part of the Jews. By the way, about around 3,000 years from now, Jews, they were in Palestine. <laughs> At that time, somehow, some of them, they were applying part of Allah's will at that time. So some of them, they were what? Muslims. The divine universal law was applicable on them. The bad believers of them, they will be punished. <laughs> In the same time, if they are as believers, were attacked by someone else, this someone else will be punished if he's attacking the places of worship. The Assyrians, al Ashuriyin, they killed a lot of believers from the Jews about 3,000 years ago, from now. They were destroyed. Tens of years ago, Babylonians, they attacked another group of believers of Jews, <laughs> and they destroyed their masajid at that time. <laughs> Subhanallah. Later on, later on, Jews under under the Romans, they were persecuting and torturing who? Christians. <laughs> Christians, they were tortured and killed in at the very after the, what is the supposed crucifixion of Jesus Christ. You know, as Muslims, you didn't, we don't believe. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ According to us, we believe that he, he is not the son of God. He is a prophet and messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He came as a messenger and he was left and he was taken by his body. Isa alayhi salam in our faith has not, did not face the normal death yet. <laughs> you need to know this. The only person that we know that still since he was born, he is still holding his spirit without facing the normal death is Isa alayhi salam. Okay? قَالْ وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ جَزَاكَ اللَّهُ خَرَبِيلُ بَلْ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ He was lifted. He was taken by Allah. Because part of our faith that Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ, he will be sent again in the end of the time, which could be soon. And he will be leading Muslims <laughs> as their leader. He will be the Muslim leader. This part of our faith, by the way. And we, are, we believe in that. And it's mentioned in the Quran and in the Sunnah. Now, my point, he was lifted in 33 AD. Okay? In 70 AD, which means after 37 years of his disappearance, for us, he was taken by Allah for 
For Christians, he was what? Crucified, which is unacceptable for us, but I'm just telling you. After that, Jews in these 37 years, they were discriminating and torturing Christians and killing them under the power of the Romans at that time. <laughs> Subhanallah, the end result, Jews themselves, they were punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala under the Romans. <laughs> now the funny things, later on, Christians themselves, they had the power after 325, they started what? Doing what? Discriminating and torturing Jews under their power. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing you, when you see. Now, when you see all of these kinds of ups and downs, ups and downs, and no one of them, Allah enabled him to keep the power all the time. Every one of all these groups, they were punished. Because all of them, they came under this ayah, <laughs> which is, Woman, أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ مَنْعَ no one is doing more wrong than the one who's preventing the houses, the places of worship of Allah from Allah's name to be mentioned and the first thing. Has this happened in different ages and times? Yes, because you know as Muslims, we believe that we are the continuation of what? Long chain of believers. Anyone followed Isa alayhi salam in his time, for us, he's what? Muslim, a believer. He's our brother, brother and sister. Anyone was following Musa alayhi salam, Dawood alayhi salam, Sulaiman alayhi salam, in his time, for us is what? Muslim, a believer. So they are all our brothers and sisters. So in their time, if they are faced and they were killed and their places of worship were destroyed, which has happened already, Allah will punish the groups who did so. So this is the general meaning of the ayah, woman, which is the general meaning. We know and we witnessed a lot of examples from the time of the Assyrians, Babylonians, you know, Romans, the Greek, many times happen. And the funny thing, you know, Jews against Christians, Christians, then the, the Jews, then we came into you know, as we say, into the scene now. <laughs> we, by the way, we are, we are, we are, we are the, <laughs> the youngest <laughs> brother. <laughs> and I mean, last. As we say, Akhir Al-Angud. Do you Akhir Al-Angud? Akhir Al-Angud. We Muslims. Akhir Al-Angud. Do you have a language in the English? Akhir Al-Angud? In their culture, do they use something like that? They don't have it, huh? Untranslatable. Just the youngest, okay? So we are the youngest. Old Testament, New Testament, Last Testament, okay? So, alhamdulillah, this, but you need to understand that this is the context of the meaning of the ayah. Tight. And by the way, it happened again. After we started having our power and representing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we faced what we know in the history, the crusades. You need to know this. Now, after the power of Roman Christianity, at, unfortunately, they attacked us. Eight crusade campaigns, 200 years. They ended around 500 years from now. Ended. Okay? About 500 years from now. Jerusalem, it was occupied by European Christian crusaders in 1099, which means 900 years from now. And according to their historical records, they killed tens of thousands of Muslims. Tens of thousands of Muslims. So, subhanAllah, absent. then we faced another attack by what is politically called colonial countries. And all of them, they were religious. You know about British and French, but you don't know about the Spanish. You don't know about the Portuguese. You don't know about the Holland or the Deutsch. They were occupying in Indonesia, part of India. <laughs> yes, 700 years ago, 600 years ago, 900 years ago, they killed thousands and hundreds of thousands. And they, they say colonized. Actually, they occupied and killed. So this kind of ups and downs, the sunnah, the law of Allah is applicable on everyone. The one who does this will face, you know, adab fi dunya and al akhirah as long as you realize what you are doing. Type. Someone might say, 
ما شاء الله عليك وما شاء الله عليك يخزي العين على المسلمين شو يعني يخزي العين كان يترانسليتيت يخزي العين ورضو اتس ان ترانسليتبل طيب Some people might ask, Ammi, and you are mentioning Assyrians, Babylonians, Greek, Romans, Jews, Christians. What about Muslims? When you had the power, we were one of the mightiest powers for hundreds of years. True or false? Tayeb. Does Islam ask us to demolish the places of worship of others? Even though we don't believe that they are doing right, are we allowed to do so? No. Actually, you need to be proud of the following. I will keep highlighting. لا إكراها في الدين قد تبين رشد من الغي. Number one, please keep it in the no compulsion in religion. Number one. Number two. Historically, go and read. It's proved even in the Christian records. It's maybe the only incident. In history, a new power comes to a religious sacred city and it was submitted peacefully. Who did it to who? Yes, ah, say, Isra, yes. Yes, yes, in Aqsa, yes. At the time of Al Khattab, Sophronius, he was the priest, he was like the archbishop of Jerusalem. About 1370 years ago, he submitted the keys of Al-Quds to Umar al-Khattab handed without shedding one drop of blood of a person. Now, let those people, colonizers, who killed hundreds of thousands and millions, listen to this. This is our reality of Islam. We, we came, we as Muslims, through our caliph Umar al-Khattab, he became in charge of Jerusalem without using a sword. <laughs> Can you understand this? People will say, oh, no, 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 this is a myth. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is part of, I think, maybe uh, Disneyland uh, cartoon. For, for, no, it's reality. It happened. Alhamdulillah, we, we, are, we do not force anyone and we do not touch. And let me just give you this, this beautiful incident happened to me. Maybe this will fix the whole concept in your mind. About 10, 11, I forget, 2010 or 2011, 11, 12 years ago from now, I received an invitation to give a series of lectures in Hong Kong University. I was invited as a university professor in comparative religions and Islamic studies. So I went there as a university professor to speak with university students. They asked me to speak about two main topics, Islam and democracy, Islam and women's rights, okay? So I was in one of the lectures addressing around 400 students from about 50 countries. All kinds of religions, cultures, ethnicities, colors, uh, religions you can imagine. So at a certain point, I faced the common question. <laughs> Islam was spread by sword. We know that Islam was spread. You know, this is a big lie. It was spread. Jazakumullah khair for the coffee. Barakallah. Shukran jazeel. Ah. La lissa ma. Lissa ma khalastash. Hai babla. Ba'ala gu'at. But just give me time. Ma'alaj. Jazakallah khairan. What I was saying? Oh, okay, okay, Hong Kong, okay. <coughs> so, uh, the normal reaction, Islam was spread by sword, to Muslims, to Muslims, to Irhab, you know, this kind of, <laughs> unfortunately. I said, look, now I have 400 students from different 50 countries and cultures and religions. I mean, and I have very, very limited time. You can't, I don't have this kind of... Uh, space to bring evidences, to read books, and to bring videos, and just a few minutes. You know, hundreds of students, different cultures, different understanding. I said, look, I will cut it into short, and I'll prove it to you through figures. I will not waste your time with claims or philosophy, or I think, I believe, do you think? No, 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 just numbers. Look what I did. If you can benefit from this, use it. I said, 
Do you have an idea, all of you, how many years Muslims ruled India? So one of them, he said 1,000 years. Said that's true, actually, they ruled India about 850 years. <laughs> 850 years, okay? I thought at that time it's 1,000. It's at around 900. Anyway, I said, okay. And we were kicked out as Islamic rulings just when the British came in 1858, around less than 200 years ago. I said, just let's calculate it in math. Math, not philosophy, not emotions. I said, do you have any idea about the percentage or the population of Hindus in India now? For your information, India now, it's 1.2 billion person. 950 million Hindus. Muslims less than 200 millions. Muslims are 14% now. Indians, eight, Hindus, they are 80%. But when the British came, Bangladesh and Pakistan did not exist. So all of them, they were part of what? India. So to be fair, let's calculate Bengali people, Pakistani people with Indian Muslims. More or less around 170 million, 190 million. 170 million, all together around 500 million Muslims now, as if they are part of historical India, compared with 950 millions of Hindus. Right. We Muslims ruled India 850 years without social media to expose anything that we could have done secretly. No one used to have the power to stop us. If our religion used to tell us as part of our faith that others have no right to live and they must be killed or their places of worship should not exist. If, if this is our religion, God forbid. 850 years, the complete power with us. Is it acceptable logically still we have on earth 950 millions of Hindus? If, if, I mean, let's calculate it in, in maths. 850 years, if God forbid, it's just a theory. Muslims, because their religion as claim, they used to kill just one, one Hindu after every Salat village in each, in, uh, after every Salat Fajr in each village. Just one. 850 years. Imagine, maybe, maybe Hindus will what? Disappear completely from earth. So in figures, the fact that you have now 950 millions of Hindus and the power of Muslims was simply just taken just 200 years ago, this is a clear-cut mathematical proof that Muslims, when they had the power for thousands of years, they did not kill not even one Hindus. Are you with me? This is a clear-cut evidence. Add to this. That Ottoman Empire just collapsed less than 90 years ago, or 100 years ago. Before that, all Arab world, they were under Muslim Ottomans, including Syria, Iraq, Egypt. Now, in Egypt, we have about, more or less, about 10 million Christian Arabs, Christian Egyptians. They are called the, the, the Akbat, the Copts. But if Muslims used to demolish, kill everything, how on earth those 10 million still exist? Where did they come from? So Al, it's a common sense logical question. Where did they come from? The hundreds of th thousands of Christians in Syria and Iraq, where did they come from? They are originally there since 2000 years, by the way. They are there, living there, enjoying their life enjoying their churches, no one touched them. This is a clear cut what? It's an, it's, it's, by the way, it's a solid physical evidence that anyone is thinking to accuse Islam. Islam does not accept others. You prove it by this. I, I said this in the conference. And because in the conference I had all types of religions, I continued my argument. I said, 
Now, as long as you are accusing me as a Muslim of my religion, let me give you the other way of sign. Type, I, I will give you the other side of the coin. Do you know what is the other side of the coin? When we lost power, what others did to us? I went immediately to Andalus. I said, do you have an idea how many years did we live, we Muslims in Andalus, to ruling Andalus? No one knew. I said, 800 years. From 97 Hijri up to 897. Exactly 800 years, which is the date, by the way. 897 Hijri, which is about 500 years ago. It's the, the year of the collapse of Granada, Sukut Garnata, which was the end of Muslims in Andalus. I said, so we were kicked out after 800 years of existence. We were millions and millions and millions. I said, I challenge you. If you can't prove to me, I was speaking with the audience now. If you can't prove to me that there is now just one village in nowadays Spain, one village contains just 40 families, just. They are directly from the decent ship of Muslims of Andalus. I'm ready to leave Islam. No one can prove it because they what? Finito, you know finito? <laughs> Oof, evaporated. Evaporated why? Because Islam asked them to evaporate? Because they were killing themselves? Or because others, they were so peaceful? You know, the level of peaceful act was so amazing to a degree that they lost their lives. <clears throat> All of them. They do not exist. Yet, we are accused of what? <laughs> we are accused that Islam was spread by sword. By the way, this is math. I'm not discussing now emotions. I'm not discussing philosophy. I'm giving you evidences about historical facts. No one on earth can deny that Muslims, they were ruling India. No one can deny now that Hindus are 950 million. No one can deny that we have about 10 million Copts in Egypt. No one can deny that we don't have Muslims in Spain. <laughs> so historical facts. So this is a clear evidence that we Muslims, we do not have anything in our religion, has to do with rejecting, preventing, killing, finishing others. On the contrary, we are proud that we might be the only culture, the only religion which allows completely the existence of others with full respect. Have you heard about the beautiful hadith, which is, Man adha dhimmiyan faqad adhani. Prophet, the word dhimmi, ah, oh, how they translate it. You know the word dhimma, dhimma means one's honor. It's, it's, it's a very high respected word. When, you say, when I tell you in an Arabic language, لَكَ فِي ذِمَّةِ such and such money, which means I'm declaring that I owe you and my honor is connected to this word. If I fail to repay you this money as if I'm losing my honor. This is the meaning of ذِمَّة. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam called non-Muslims in the Muslim state Ahlul Dhimma, the people who have been given the promise that we owe them full protection and if we break this, we have lost our honor. This is the meaning of Ahlul Dhimma. Do you know how it's translated in the books of Orientalists? Do you know the people Dhimma, how it's translated in the book of Orientalists? For the Muslims when they read, second class people in the Muslim society. Second class people in the Muslim society. You can't imagine the amount of unfairness against us in male literature. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. But anyway, the, the, the idea, so just keep in your mind, because some people might keep asking, you know, discussing with you about your history. You're Islam. No. On what base you are saying so? You know Muslims, okay, use this. If that's true, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? <laughs> Are you with me? And by the way, let me just correct another thing. When we say Coptic or Copts as well, the Egyptian, by the way, the word Egyptian, Egypt, Copts, 
Egyptians are a nation of Coptic people. When Islam came to them, Copts, majority of them, they accepted Islam. Minority, they decided to stay Christians and with full respect. <laughs> okay? So actually, all Egyptians are Copts. <laughs> Those who decided to become Muslims, they became what? Muslim Copts. <laughs> <laughs> Those who de decided to stay as is, and you need to know the history to say how Islam, by the way, Copts, they are Orthodox. They used to be ruled by the Romans, the Catholics, and they were torturing them. They were killing them. They were attacking them. When Muslims came at the time of Amr ibn al-As, Copts of Egypt, they welcomed him, and they were saved and fully protected, and they brought their Pope or their Archbishop to rule their church under Muslims, and they had a very nice relations. When the colonial, you know, Westerner came, the French and the British, they started planting the seeds of <laughs> fight between them. You need to know that, because some people, they say, when you say Copts in Egypt, they are... The original people and Muslims, they are the Arabs. This is a big mistake. All of my Egyptians, they are Copts. Group of them decided to become Muslims. A group of them stayed Christians. So all of them, they are the people of the land. Muslims, they are not just the Arabs. <laughs> this is very important to know, to understand this, because it's a group. Islam, okay. Who accepted this? Who accepted this? My point, our idea... I was replying to a possible doubt with regard woman because we are criticizing anyone who does so. Did we do it as Muslims? I mean, when I say did we do it, does Islam ask us to do so against others when they have the power? But what if it happened by a tyrant ruler claims to be Muslim? Is it the problem of Islam? So this is, uh, it happens in every culture and every religion. You can come, for example, to Christians. Now, for example, historically, Germans, they are Christians. Historically, Hitler is a Christian. Can we tell Christians, hey, he does not represent us. So, if, if you come to ask European Christians, does Hitler represent you historically? Germans, they are what? They are Christians. White European Christians. If I told them, how come you Christians allowed Hitler, they would say he does not represent Christianity, which is true. So therefore, if we have a bad Muslim ruler, a dictator Muslim ruler, who killed Christians or Jews because he himself was a dictator, does this represent Islam? If any dictator Muslim did something bad, to a non-Muslim will be an accusation against Islam. If that's as acceptable, then Hitler is white European Christian, which is not the case <laughs> because we can use the same <laughs> argument. And you, 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 I mean, we can bring many, many examples. British colonialism, French colonialism. Is it part of the Catholic Church or it's part of politics? <laughs> they occupied 16, for example, French. They killed millions in Africa. Is it on behalf of Christianity or secular politics? When someone tells you, Muslim, like, wait, 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 wait. Islam is against this. I don't care if a Muslim politician did something bad. Be aware of how to understand these things. It's not my problem. It's not the problem of Islam. Because the same thing. Jews, they have their bad people. Christians, they have their bad people. I'm talking about the religion. In Islam, we have what? La ikraha fid din. No compulsion in religion. In Islam, we have the one who hurts a non-Muslim in the Islamic state, he is hurting me in person. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, this is the religion. The one who applies this is a practicing Muslim. The one who does not apply this is a non-practicing Muslim, and I don't care if he claimed he's a Muslim. Clear? Wadah? This is in light of woman azlam women mana'a. مساجد الله أن يذكر فيها اسمه وسعى في خرابها أولئك ما كان لهم أن يدخلوها إلا خائفين لهم في الدنيا خز ولهم في الآخرة عذاب عظيم طيب now next آية ولله المشرق والمغرب فأينما تولوا فثم وجه الله إن الله واسع عليم this is one fifteen Allah says to Allah belong the east and the west. 
So wherever you turn, you, you turn, you are facing towards Allah. Surely Allah is all encompassing, all knowing. Now, Allah is just saying that Allah owns everything, all places, all directions. Wherever you go, you can direct yourself to your Lord. But what is the relation between the two verses? Look now, the relation. I could not read something direct from the Mufassirin. So I will do some kind of ijtihad. <laughs> ijtihad means I'm trying to reach a conclusion. What is the relation between woman who is doing more wrong than the one who stops and walillahi al mashriq al What is the relation? What could be, wallahu alam, this is my conclusion, okay? Not the Mufassirin. What could be? If it happened to you that there is a power against you, <laughs> prevented you from being able to go to the masajid or to enjoy places of worship. Does this mean Islam finished? Does this mean your role in terms of directing yourself to Allah stopped? No, 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 no. <laughs> Which means, okay, part of the system when it's ideal to have masajid. But what if we don't have a masajid? For whatever reason. What if? You have your houses, your places, streets, outside, wild, anywhere. Your original connection is with Allah. The masajid is part of the system of organizing you to have a better, okay, organizing for your things and your issues. For whatever reason, you don't have this, immediately nothing will be changed. You still Allah does exist everywhere. Do your best to be a Muslim. Practice your deen. Do everything for the sake of this Allah, the fact that the place does not exist. And by the way, this is applicable on many Muslims in the West. Maybe they don't have a madrasa or they don't have a masjid. Tayyab, khalas finished? La, your house, your community, your houses, your gatherings. Nothing should stop. So be careful. As if Allah is telling you, this is the ideal. This is the best. If you lose this, still you are asked to keep in touch with your Lord. Clear? Now let's jump to the third ayah, which will be our last section in today's uh, group or paragraph. And it contains some kind of very deep information as well. Subhanahu. Amazingly, amazingly, after speaking about those who prevent Allah's word to be mentioned in the masajid and his will, Allah is talking about those who claim that Allah has a son. <laughs> Look. Let me read the meaning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. They say Allah has offspring. Glory be to him. In fact, to him belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth. All are subject to his will. Then he is the originator of the heavens and the earth. When he decrees a matter, he simply tells it be and it is. Now, at the end, I will try to connect or to highlight in my understanding what is the relation between two ayat. But let's understand the ayah now by itself, just separately. Allah says, وَقَالُوا They say, who are they? This is a Quranic Style, be careful. Allah is using the pronoun. They claim that Allah has offspring. Allah lahu dhurriya. Waqalu attakhad ar-Rahmanu walada. By the way, the, the word walad in Arabic means male and female. Be careful, not son. Offspring. In Arabic, when I say, indi awlad, in the, the true Arabic, does not mean I have boys. I have what? Kids, boys and girls. <laughs> the word walad. 
But Arabs generally, they use the word walad for boys. I'm talking about Arabic language, not what some Arabs are using now. Because the usage of the words, it has ups and downs and changing. I'm talking about the Quranic Arabic now. In original classical Arabic, the word walad means boy or girl. So when they, I say, وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَنُ وَلَدَ Allah is talking about a group because they, they, وَقَالُوا They say Allah has offspring. Who are they? What do you think? Who are they? Because Allah is speaking about a group now. Could be who? Christians and? Our cousin. Yes, Jews. Who are they? Who else? The Mushrikeen of Mecca. Banatullah. Who, who, who are Banatullah? Malaika. <laughs> now, Allah, by the way, in this ayah, Allah is covering anyone who claims that Allah has offspring. Anyone. Okay? Now, to the best of our knowledge, the most common three or two, the most common two, then an addition, which is a three, are the Mushrikeen of Mecca, because they used to claim that the angels are the daughters of Allah. <laughs> now, for us Christians, they believe in Trinity, which contains the Son of God. And Quran told us about something Many people does not come to their mind. A group of Jews at a certain time of the history, they claimed it Azra or Izra or Uzair, the son of God. So it's mentioned in the Quran. وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ عُزَيْرُ إِبْنُ اللَّهِ Some people, they say, but no, no, it, it's not in their books. I'm not discussing what in their books. I'm discussing what the Quran told us. <laughs> And when you read in the uh, books of the Mufassirin, at least, وَقَالُوا وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَنُ وَلَدَ For example, for everything is now. Now we have, uh, and by the way, uh, Jews, Christians, and Arabs about the, 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 the angels. Now about, uh, who can remind me with the قول الله تعالى, أو كالذي مر على قرية وهي خاوية على عروشها كمل أو كالذي مر على قرية وهي خاوية على عروشها قال أنا يبكي هذه الله وعده بعده فأما الله لا يذكر فأماته الله مئة عام ثم بعثه قال كم لبثت قال لبثت يوما أو بعض يوم قال بل لبثت مئة عام فانظر إلى طعامك وشرابك لم يتسنه وانظر إلى حمارك ولنجعلك آية للناس وانظر إلى العظام كيف ننشزها ثم نكسوها لحما You know this verse? Now according to the historical مفسرين this verse talks about the incident of al uzair <laughs> He was like a great like a person in the time of the Jews at a certain time. And the city that was mentioned, أو كالذي مر على قرية, the one who passed by, قال أن يحيي هذه الله بعد موتها, it is said or claimed in the historical records that it's Jerusalem. To the best of my readings, most likely, this happened in Allahumma uh, salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad in uh, 131, 136 AD. We are talking about 1,900 years from now. <laughs> this incident. Before the Quran was about 500 years. Okay? So at this person, فَأَمَاتَهُ اللَّهُ مِئَةَ عَامٍ ثُمَّ the idea, Romans, they destroyed Jerusalem completely and they took revenge of the Jews and they destroyed many of them. And 131 or 36, I forgot. So Uzair was passing by this 
city which is Jerusalem completely destroyed. He said, "Anna yuhi hadi Allah bado mauti." It's like saying, "Wow, it's impossible for this city <laughs> to be witnessed as a new city again." فَأَمَاتَهُ اللَّهُ مِئَةَ so he became dead for 100 days, then he came again. The city was completely flourished in the new city. <laughs> and he was shocked with that. Anyway, whether this is the exact incident or not, according to their records, historical records, they say, when he came back again, his grandsons, they were approaching 80, 90s and 100. <laughs> so when he witnessed and they make sure that it's him, yes, this is his description, something. Some of them, because of they are, were very far from the faith, they claim that he is what? The son of God. And by the way, I will give you a simple example about this. Some, I don't exaggerate. I will not generalize. I say what? Some, I repeat. Some, I repeat. What? Some Sufi Muslim orders, they have this kind of shirk. They do the same. Because the sheikh of this order, for somehow, he was like a saint doing something good or bad. They immediately start doing tawassul and istighatha and asking him to bring people from the death and to speak with the dead people and to help the one who is pregnant to, to decide that he's a boy or a girl. And all of this the same. So, I mean, the idea of being far from the true aqidah and to do shirk things, it's something unfortunately common in the three religions. Okay? So, they claim that he is the son of God. And this is the mention of وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ عُزَيْرُ ابْنُ اللَّهِ This is the incident. And this is the mistake. So it was a group. فا. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدَ Let me add to your information something. Now for us as Muslims, the most common idea or concept when the concept of a son of God is mentioned, most of us, we think about Christianity. <laughs> True or false? Because this is the most common. But what many of us don't know, that the concept of that Allah has a son or an offspring is widely spread in many cultures. Many cultures. In Europe, in India, in Egypt. And by the way, by the way, Egypt, the Pharaonic Egypt, al Faraina. You know, the God, because and at the time of the Greek, ha have you heard about Zeus, Jupiter, Neo Zeus? Zeus in the Greek mytholo mythology, Zeus is the, li 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 like the big father or the father of gods, because they have multi gods. Zeus, he got married from a human female who was fallen in love with her. He is God, or one of the gods. And she's a very beautiful woman. She's married. So he waited her husband. He was busy in making a war somewhere. Then he did something bad with her. Seriously, Wallahi, I'm telling you about what they write, about this story. Then she gave birth to a person which is half human, half God. He will not die. Who is he? Hercules, Heracle. Yes, Hercules, it's half half. Now, in other narrations, part of this thing is Thor as well, that we know it in the, in the movie, Thor, you know? T-H-O-R, it's from the Greek mythology. If you see, if you can witness, at the very beginning of the movie, there was like a books with a new, newborn baby. He was thrown there in the sea for 500 years. Then he was found by a man and a normal man. They did not know that he is from a divine and there was a war between the God of evil and the God of Khair and the God of God. They were fighting and he, he decided, the son of Zeus, he decided, you, you might think it's, it's funny, it's, it was part of the faith of the Greek. This is part of their faith. What you are thinking now, you think it's just a movie film in Disney now or in uh, Netflix? It was the faith of the great, you know, Greece. The Greek mythology, it contains this. Multi-gods, Zeus and something. I mean, the idea. The idea, this great, you know, Alexander and Greece and the Greek culture, it contained the idea of Zeus 
Hercules. Hercules is the son of God. <laughs> now, in Hinduism, Hinduism it's a little bit complicated. But uh, to the best of my knowledge, they believe in more or less 33. <laughs> so it's not a message for me. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will act as if I did not hear it. <laughs> well, I forget what I was saying. <laughs> okay, by the way, Hinduism, according to the experts in comparative religions, is not classified accurately as a religion because it's an accumulation for hundreds of years of many cultures, habits, beliefs, a lot. So there is no one prophet or sacred book for Hindus. So therefore, but they believe, one of the common things, they believe in the reincarnation of God in different, you know, manifestations. So they believe in 33 gods so far. But the most well-known three, 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 trinity, big gods, Brahma, Vishnu, and Siva or Shiva. Rahman, so, Krishna, Shiva. Shiva or Siva? Shiva. Many, many resources in Arabic, they say Siva. Shiva. Shiva. Okay. So the idea of the relation between the divine and the human and having something in between is very common. At India, Egypt, Paganists, Europe, and many people, they think it's just Christianity. No, actually, Christianity was influenced by all of these <laughs> cultures. So, generally speaking, for us, we know, in addition to those people, we have the Arabs, the Arab pagans who used to believe, who used to believe that the angels, they are the daughters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rejecting completely you know, attacking completely anyone who claims that Allah has what? Offspring. Any kind of offspring. It's completely. The Islamic concept of Tawheed, monotheism, is completely against this idea. Do you know why? From the youth, please, anyone who is below 18, do you know what is, if you did not hear it, from, if you heard it from me, don't raise up your hand. Those who did not hear it from me, if you are under 18, do you know why in Islam accepting or believing that God might have a son or a daughter is completely against faith and completely prohibited? Do you know what, what is the idea? Why? What's, it, what's the justification? Why, why it's a big sin and shirk and kufur and why? Have you heard it from me? Okay, let me see. Yeah. Okay, what's the problem? Okay, we give Allah human attributes. What's the problem? Uh, yes, Sidra. Okay, okay. Finished? Sidra, uh, finished? Yes, Sidra? Okay, my question. Where is the big problem? Why it is a big, big problem in Islam in sight of Allah? Why? Why it's a major, big, critical, big sin? Why? Why, why not? Why, why not to consider it just a marginal issue? خلاص يعني ما 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 تعادهاش يا خويا وخلاص يعني. It's a, like any simple sin. Why not? Yes. Okay, that's true. Jazakallah khair. You are highlighting how important it is. I'm trying to pay your attention. Where is the problem? Why it is so important? Okay, let me tell you because uh, Abu Sharif is uh, you know behind us, so we have just limited time. <laughs> Okay, let me just highlight very quickly. Please, if you understand this, you understand the core, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends of places in the Quran is mentioning which is completely, it's completely against Islam. And by the way, accepting this idea will put you outside of Islam. Okay, why? The whole idea of Islam is built on the idea that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. From one angle, okay? 
This creator has what we call Sifatul Kamal. He has the attributes of perfection. Now, he created everything and everything is created on, weak, on weakness and defects. Yani, the universe, the existence contains just two parts, creator and creation. <laughs> Everything else apart from the creator is creation. Everything inside the creation is built on the concept of weakness and defects because it was created. The only perfect being is Allah. So when you resemble tashbih, anything from the creation with Allah, you will be insulting Allah because you are you are accusing Allah that he has what? Similarity to weakness and defects. That's why, for example, we, we human beings, we are part of the creation. Are we perfect or we have weakness points? I mean by weakness that one of the most well-known weakness points that you need many things apart from yourself. Can you live without water? You are weak. Can you live without food? Can you live if you are a young child and, no, and there is no mother or no one taking care of you? You will die. Can you live without oxygen? No. Can you live without sleep? No. So uh, the fact that you need means you are what? You are on the base of defects. You need. That is the meaning of Qul Allahu Ahad Allahu as the meaning of as-samad قال as-samad قال al-qa'im bi-thatih ghayr al-muhtaj li-ghayrih samad means the one who exists by his own and does not need anything anyone outside himself he does not need anyone for you and me and everything in the creation we are all in need for everything else no one can create himself by himself no one can be completely independable. But all of us, we are completely dependable on many things in our lives. That's why we are weak with defects. So when you say, for example, Allah has a, a son, whether you mean it metaphorically or you mean it whatever or physically, in somehow, in Islamic understanding, you are what? Accusing Allah of weakness and defects and in Islamic faith, Islamic creed, you are insulting Allah and committing an act of kufr. That's why Allah made it very clear. Laysa kemithlihi shay. Nothing. So don't let your mind accept any possibility. So when someone says, like the Arabs, angels, they are the daughters of Allah, they are insulting Allah. If anyone says such and such is the son of Allah in Islam, he's insulting Allah. Clear? Why? The idea of وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدَا By the way, this is not the only place. حَفَظَةَ الْقُرْآنَ لَقَدْ جِئْتُمْ شَيْئًا إِدَّةَ تَكَادُ السَّمَوَاتُ يَتَفَطَّرُنَ وَتَنْشَقُّ الْأَرْضِ الآية اللي قبلها لَقَدْ جِئْتُمْ شَيْئًا إِدَّةَ وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ لا وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرحمن ولد لقد جئتم شيئا ادى تكاد السماوات يتفطرن وتنشق الارض وتخر الجبال هدا ان دعوا للرحمن ولدا. Because some people they say يا عمي it's very simple not very simple for Allah it's not simple you are insulting him whether you liked it or not Allah is telling you if you accuse me that I have a son you are insulting me. بدنا نحكي لربنا لا 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 it's not a big issue no no it's not a big issue no it is a big for him and he's telling you وقال وقالوا اتخذ الرحمن ولدا they say still he's not mentioning such and such he say they anyone says وقالوا اتخذ الرحمن ولدا لقد جئتم شيئا ابدا you have made a very big great sin it's a disaster تكاد to a degree he's giving you like a metaphorical understanding how disastrous it is قال تكاد السماوات يتفطرن if heavens were given the will power to react towards the claim that Allah has a son they will split into pieces heavens 
قال وتخر الجبال هدى mountains will be completely demolished and بسبب because they are claiming that God has a son so no one can claim to me so you know this is something easy it's not easy it's not by the way not your or my decision it's the decision of who it's of Allah clear طيب the final message now this is the meaning of the ayah what could be the relation between وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ مَنْعَ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ عَيُّ يُذْكَرَ فِيهَا اسْمُهُ and وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ رَحْمَانُ وَلَدَهُ what could be the relation by the way I read about seven tafasir since the early morning I'm reading I could not find a direct connection okay I did not have enough time to read more tafasir because it takes me hours by the way sometimes I read seven tafasir for about five to seven hours to find an answer for simple question. I could not find directly. To the best of my study, the previous study, what could be the meaning Wallahu A'lam and I finish this insha'Allah to have the adhan and the prayer. Wallahu A'lam. When Allah says, said, وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ مَنَعَ Who is doing more wrong? The one who prevented Allah's name to be mentioned. Now Allah's name resembles the purification of Tawheed. <laughs> then Allah is mentioning to you one of the greatest things that destroys the purification of Tawheed. To claim that Allah has what? Son means partner. Because we human beings, the son of the king is the new king. The son of the president, especially in the Arab world. You know Arab world? Yes, the son of the king, the son of the president always is a king. Always a president. Alhamdulillah. We have, an, mashallah, in Arab countries, we are amazing in this. It's by default. The king or the president or the boss or the whatever, whoever. He stays 30 years, 34 years, 50 years. When he dies immediately, his son will be the great new king. By default. No one utters a word. So... Allah subhanahu wa as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is paying our attention to the following facts. Now, be careful not to participate in any aspect that destroys the purification that Allah alone should be number one in your places of worship. Now, one of the greatest aspects of bringing partners and destroying the tawheed to believe that Allah has a son. From faith point of view to claim this kind of defect against Allah. From political, intellectual point of view, this son or partner or this part of God will share God with the power, <laughs> which is completely against Islam. Clear? Any question? Yes. Uh, I have a question back to the first ayah. Um, how can yeah, you explain that and we, can't, we don't fight anyone who's practicing a religion other than ours? Yeah, and currently, Palestine was suddenly. We, we fight them, we want them off the land. Where, like, someone argues that we're not a peaceful religion, then we don't want their peace, and we want the land back. I did not say we are a peaceful religion. No, no, no. By the way, there is no country who is completely peaceful in the context of the history of humanity. Peace, if I say peaceful, means. We do not use our power to force the people, but we have the full right to defend our rights, and this is a common, normal human sense. Even animals have it. When you have the power and someone is attacking you, now tell me, forget the religions now, forget now. Democratic countries, do they all fight to defend themselves or not? Type United Nations, United Nations, do they supposedly represent world peace and something okay do they use machine guns and their troops to attack countries to spread peace can you imagine you say they attack kill to spread peace is this what they do or not yes 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 we say we will send now united nations on behalf of united nations in the uh, for example uh, the, this uh, the security council we have let's say we have a country x country they have a bad tyrant, for example, governor. He is torturing his people. They send troops on behalf of the United Nations, troops with the latest weapons, and they kill to spread peace. Is this a reality or not? 
This is, the, the, this is now what we do. <laughs> Ukraine, they are sending yes. Okay, now in between Ukraine and Russia, all European countries, they are supporting Europe with weapons and the, the, we have a lot of people that are losing their lives. The aim, claimed aim is what? To spread peace, to settle down peace. So we are like all other nations. Don't discuss it from a religious point of view. We have the right to defend our rights, lands, honors. So it's not a mart, it does not contradict by the way. When we say we are a peaceful, peaceful which means we will not use our power against people without any valid reason. And our religion does not ask us to use the power when we have it to stop people or prevent people from believing. Ah, it does not mean, it's our, no, we defend ourselves. Like it's a normal human need, not just a religious. And anyone who claims that the religion should be completely peaceful, just, I mean, it does not exist in reality. It's just, uh, what do you say? It's just a... Uh, Yes. yes, yes. It's just, I, I think you will find it just in Netflix and Disneyland and uh, Hollywood, just. Well, I, in movies, you find this in movies. It does not exist. Can you imagine someone, he is attacked at his own, look to the Americans now, millions of them, by law, they have the full right to hold what? Arms. They are, they are armed. Why? To protect themselves. Now, are we living in the, by the way, America, do they, um, Americans, do they consider themselves the most powerful and well-known democratic state on earth or not? But how come more than 150 to 200 millions they hold machine guns by law? What's this? Simply, it's a normal common human sense. I want to defend myself when anyone is about to attack me, to kill me, I want to defend myself. This is America, democracy, top. True or false? So no contradiction at all? Wallahu a'lam. Yes, brother. So you said that there is creator and creation. Yes. So I was wondering, so you said creation is something with weaknesses. It's a, it, creation is something what? It's something with like weaknesses or flaws. Like a human. Weakness? Weakness? Yeah, or flaw, right? Is brother, ca ca can you remove the mask? Okay. 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 Creation usually has a weakness or flaw. Yes. Right. So I was wondering, Jannah, because that definitely fits under creation. Yes, it is definitely. So what is the flaw of Jannah? No, no. I mean, now I can't tell you exactly what is the weakness of Jannah, but it's part of the creation. I mean, the Jannah did not create itself by itself. <laughs> the Jannah itself has limitations. It's it works as Allah commanded the law to works within it. The fact that Jannah itself does not control ultimately itself by itself to change the law, it's a weakness point. It's part of the creation. So, so rules are limitations. Yes. Limitation is part of weakness, by the way. Yeah. You got my point? Yeah. Ah, it, it's okay, relatively. But for us, it's, it's one of the highest perfect cre of the creation. Because now our weakness is so high. We need to go to the washroom. We need to sleep. We need to take rest. We do sweat after we eat and drink. This is part of the weakness, plus we hate these things. In the Jannah new law, we don't sleep, we don't feel tired, there's no heat, no direct sun, and we don't feel hungry. We eat just to have pleasure. After we eat, what we eat will come out of our bodies like perfume, instead of going to the washroom to do one or two. So, it's a new law, <laughs> but still limitations. <laughs> Clear? Tamam? Yes? I want to add, you know, you talk about the multiple gods, right? Yes. In India, according to Hindu mythology, whenever a family, Hindu family, receive some kind of disaster, right? So I've heard many times, you have, you might have called all three God. That's why they left you alone. Because if you are calling three God at a time, they are going to fight each other, right? To help. And the guy, the guy, he is calling to God, all three, so he is left alone. Because God are fighting each other. What? So I have heard many times. And by the way, yes, because, I mean, Hindus, they believe in the God of Khair and God of, God of Shar, God of Evil. 
You see? Anyway, the points, please keep saying Alhamdulillah ala na'mat al-Islam. Alhamdulillah. That's what, by, by the way, when you, when you keep, please do your best, inshallah, let's finish with this. Try to have what we call a word. Have you heard this terminology, word? Of tasbih, for example? Try always just to say, for example, Hadith Sahih Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He say, "Man qala la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu al-mulk wa lahu al ala kulli shayin qadir." One hundred times, he's as if he in, he freed ten slaves and the ajr of freeing ten slaves from slavery every day, and no one will be be brooding any khair except someone did more like him. This is just to say that, for example. من قال سبحان الله وبحمده مئة مرة فله ألف حسنة one thousand حسنة في سدة. Now when you have such a word at least one hundred times سبحان الله وبحمده or at least one hundred times لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك ولا الحمد لله كل شيء قدير. When you say this keep recalling in your mind these meanings. I mean we say الحمد لله الحمد لله for what? الحمد لله يا الله that I know. The honor of having the true, final, pure knowledge in itself is one of the biggest gifts. <laughs> to understand, to be aware, to have the opportunity to know Allah through His revelation in itself, it's a big honor. Alhamdulillah, Nehmet Islam. Alhamdulillah for the honor of the health. Alhamdulillah for the honor of the Muslim community. Alhamdulillah for the uh, gift of the brothers and the sisters that we have. You know. When you think, Alhamdulillah for your parents, Alhamdulillah for your family, Alhamdulillah for many, many, keep recalling these things on top of them, Ni'mat al-Islam. Imagine if you are a non-believer, you are a non-Muslim, what could you have been, for example? Allah, Allah knows. Allah knows what we will be. Maybe half of us will be gangsters killing people now. Wallahu alam, you never know. Maybe third of us, Will, will, will pass away uh, over those of drugs. Alhamdulillah, ala ni'mat al-Islam. Zakum Allah khair. See you next Monday, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.